Hi everyone, I want to go ahead and show you how I go about making this um, gift box. And it could be used as a gift box, a, a treat holder, or any kind of jewelry box, anything for anyone as a gift. And I wanted to show you guys that there is a die that, you know, makes, you know, cuts this out for you. And it's called the, it's from Stampin' Up! and it's called Pop and Cuts. And I'll also share the link on the bottom on the description below where you can purchase those, um, the die from Stampin' Up! Demonstrators. So let me go ahead and show you how I go about it without having the die. So that way you can go ahead and have fun creating these um, boxes. And, you know, if you want to make bulks, you can have more friends to help you or you can just purchase the die from them. So what you want to go ahead and start off with is having a designer paper or even a um, cardstock. Like for me, I went ahead and used designer paper for the front and then um, it's almost like a cardstock for the the sides the box for it inside so here we go first thing is you want to have a cardstock that measures or a design paper at 11 by four and a quarter okay so 11 and four and a quarter then you want to have two pieces of paper that measures three inches by two and a half so three inches by two and a half and you need two pieces of these so these will be the sides. So you want to have something that coordinates with the you know, designer paper that you'll be using. Or you can just use one whole thing. It depends whatever your style is. Okay, and then on these little um, sentiment parts here, I went ahead and um, cut these two right here. And the cards, the designer paper that I have on the back, um, it has this little pattern on here. I, this measures at um, four by one inch. And then the top part, you know, if you want to go ahead and put another sentiment here, measures at um, 7, 8 by 3 and 5 eighths. So that way it gives it about, well, like an eighth of an inch all around, almost. well, just on these two sides. Because when, once you, I use my um, square 1, 3 eighths, I think this is, yeah, I don't know if this is EK success. Yes, it is EK success. You're going to go ahead and get this... Um, punch right here on this so that's what I use so it's hard sometimes to measure it like how you're go where to cut it but just play around and I hope you get the right way you know the right style but that's the measurement that I start off with okay so let's go ahead and start this on the 11 side of the cardstock you want to go ahead and score it at one and a half two and a half four and a half Six and a half, eight and a half, and the reason why I square it twice is because my cardstock is a little bit harder, my designer paper, and also nine and a half. So let me go ahead and give you those measurements again. You want to score at one and a half, two and a half, four and a half, six and a half, eight and a half, and nine and a half on the eleven side. Okay. Then you want to go ahead, like before you, you um, fold your creases, put the two together, okay, the two corners of each corner right here, okay. And how I got this was just using uh, my, my corner rounder or you can use your corner punch. And I went ahead and just angled that and let's see here just cut the corners so it's going to look like this. Now depending on what kind of punches you have, like I have this right here as my uh, contemporary label punch as my hole punch for my label on this one and then as you guys saw my haul I purchased this oval um, one and a quarter by two uh, punch by, um, this is also E-Cake Success, but hello it does not want to go all the way in so I'm just going to go ahead and use my regular um, Stampin' Up! Contemporary Punch, label punch. And I'm just going to eye, you know, just eyeball it in between the this side of the four and a quarter side and make it in the middle. And then just maybe a, let me see, a quarter of an inch away from the score line. And I'm just going to go ahead and punch that. Okay. Now, if you don't have that contemporary label punch, you can go ahead and use a circle punch, or you know, if you want to use your um, 
your blade and just you know your 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 knife and just cut here and make this little handle or if you have the new um, oval punch go ahead and do that then you want to go ahead and then reinforce all your um, score lines let me go ahead and do this so on this one I, I fold this way first because this is the handle part then I go ahead and fold it in but you'll see when I'm done with the um, video how you can go ahead and fold your um, creases if you want. It'll still turn out the same way. Like, so you can still punch it out this way. But the reason why I did it like this is because when you push this out, see if you if you folded it inwards, it's going to go like this. So you need to fold it the half an inch, oh, one and a half inch towards you. The first crease line, you need it to fold it towards you. So that way it will build your box. And that's what it looks like inside. Okay. And then on these three by two and a half inches, um, I'll link up two videos. There's one that gives you this measurements, and then there's one that you can do the whole box, you know, which is kind of cut out the whole thing. But I think this was an easier and uh, faster way to do it. So on the three inch side, you want to go ahead and um, score these at half an inch. Okay, so half an inch. So it'll be two and three quarters. Well, hold on half an inch so it'll be two and a half on this side on the three inch side okay and then also half an inch on this side so this is on the three inch side okay so half an inch and then two and a half inch on the three inch side okay half an inch two and a half when you have it at the two and a half inch you you're only going to score one and that's half an inch right here one side you're not going to score on this side only this side so you're basically left with like a letter H almost you know okay and these little corners here we're gonna go ahead and cut out so remember two squares is all you're going to cut out so on the three inch you want to go ahead and score one and then two and a half half an inch and two and a half sorry half an inch I don't know why I said one half an inch two and a half turn it on the two and a half inch and score it at half an inch Okay, and then you can cheat like me and just use your um, square punch or you can use your scissors and look for that square and, oops, sorry. Okay, let me see. I'm just, I'm trying to get it inside so then I don't, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Okay, and then you just want to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Just get it in there. Okay, same thing on the other side. Almost like making little envelopes, but not our pockets, library pockets. Okay. Then on this side, you want to go ahead and use either um, a double stick tape, score tape, or your um, red tape, whichever you have in hand. And you can even use your hot glue, but you just got to work really fast when you're using hot glue because by the time you try to fold all of this. Sometimes the hot glue will dry up and it crumbles. It'll make like, you know, it'll bulk up a little, so you don't want that. Oh my gosh, I have a piece of my hair in here. Sorry. Okay, let's see here. Let me just go ahead and just put the tape and all those on all the flaps. Put tape on all three flaps, so for each of the two and a half by three inch paper that you have. Okay. Then you can go ahead and then just go ahead and reinforce those score lines that you made. Just go ahead and fold them in all the score lines. Oops, I bumped the camera, sorry. Okay. All right, so this is what you have, okay? So when you fold that, it's gonna look like this. A little bit flimsy, but this is what's gonna make it a little bit sturdy. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and pull out, you know, um, take out the, uh, my hair is on that. Okay, so this flap here, as you know, you're gonna try to flush it Straight on this line, right? Can you see that? Let me try to flush it right 
and maybe it'll be better on this side because I could see. Okay, there you go. So you can try whichever works. I'm trying to do this with you. Okay, and then you do the same thing on this side. Flush it together. Make sure that it can totally go in there. And I don't even know if I did that one right. But it's okay. Excuse the fingernails. I did some um, gardening with my girls today. They couldn't wait for spring so we can do some gardening. So we have to put some mulch and dig up some dirt today. And put some seeds on the ground. Alright, so you want to go ahead and just stick that in there. Okay, and then go ahead and pull that in there. You know, like I said, do what works for you. Because different ways, different people do it different. I'm just trying to do it the best way I can do it with this tripod in front of me. Okay. So it's going to look just like this. Now, isn't that cute? Okay. Then you want to go ahead and either use a, uh, a ribbon, you know, any trim that you have available. So these are perfect for like scraps that you might have that, you know, it's not long enough. But hey, these are really cute. So go ahead and put that on there. And then, like I said, you want to put your sentiment on your thing here and just either use a pop-up tape and just put it on here. Go ahead and corner wrap, or you can use your square punch and make a little banner label on here. And I just use um, my Martha Stewart punch for this one, so that's why it looks like this. So I just put two, and I just use a blue dot in the back to adhere it on the box. But isn't this perfect? Isn't this cute? I think this is perfect for, like I said, teachers or any events that you have to give out gifts. And they're just really cute. You can fill up with goodies and treats. And like I said, there's a lot of links on YouTube that you can uh, find other ladies that can show you how you can go about making these. Um, and they also have the dies. So if you want to purchase the die, which is called the Pop and Cuts um, Stampin' Up die, you can pur purchase it through them. But I'll put the measurements on the description below so it will help you out a little bit easier. And then I'll go ahead and also put their links on there so you guys can see um, how they do theirs with their dye. Okay? And that's my little tutorial on how I went about making this little um, treat box. So thanks for watching. Bye.